Let's move on to main topic number two. And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by Charlie Harris. And Charlie Harris writes, Hey, John, it's now official that Power Rangers is getting a full cinematic universe that will include TV and movies that will have continuous storylines and crossovers. Knowing how popular Power Rangers is worldwide, do you think this could become the next MCU? Thanks. All right, Charlie, thanks a lot for sending that in. And yes, we've known for a while that they were looking at eyeballing at restarting Power Rangers again. It was really not that long ago that we finally got Power Rangers on the big screen. And, you know, it did its thing, did not do what they wanted it to do. So they're scrapping that and restarting again. Now, though, Hasbro now owns the property. Hasbro is now in charge of it. And they've come out and they said they are doing the full cinematic universe treatment to Power Rangers, Rob. This is what they said over at Screen Rant. A new Power Rangers cinematic universe spanning both film and television. They're going to be interconnected, they say, is officially in the works. In 2017, Paramount sought to revive the property on the big screen with a Power Rangers movie aimed at a newer generation, but it failed to elicit much excitement. As a result, there have been reports of Power Rangers getting another reboot. This latest Power Rangers film will, will reportedly be set in the 1990s. It's going to be set in the 1990s and will be directed by Jonathan Entwistle from Netflix's I Am Not Okay With This. Now, I, I got to admit, I have not seen I Am Not Okay With This. That That's not a film I've watched. So I, I really can't say uh, here nor there whether that's a good thing or bad thing. But apparently they're giving him like the full reins. He's going to be overseeing everything, like the movies, the television and all that kind of stuff, how the story is going to be interconnected. He's going to be there, Kevin Feige. He's going to be the Power Rangers, Kevin Feige. couple of interesting things here to me. Number one is this notion that it's going to be set in the 90s. I, I'm going to be straight with you. I think that's a mistake. Yeah. I think that's a mistake. I think that is a desperation attempt at them going, well, you know when the Power Rangers were popular? In the 90s. And we tried the new updated one in modern time. That didn't work. So you know what the problem was? It was the fact that we weren't set in the 90s. That was the problem. It feels kind of desperate to me. I don't think that's a good move on their part. I don't know how, especially if you're trying to get a new generation of kids into Power Rangers. I don't know how setting this is in the 90s is going to accomplish that. But then again, I don't know what their full vision is. Maybe if I knew what their full vision was, I would go, oh, yeah, setting in the 90s is a good idea. So based simply on what information is available to me right now, I, I look at this and I say, well, this looks like a mistake. This looks like a huge mistake. The other thing that looks like a huge mistake to me, Rob, is the fact that you just tried to relaunch the Power Rangers. And by the way, I thought it was pretty good. Like I, I poo-pooed all over them doing a new Power Rangers movie. I thought, listen, the Power Rangers, everybody's saying, oh, John, you don't understand how popular Power Rangers are. This is going to be a billion dollar film, John. You don't understand. You don't get it, John. I had people yelling at me. I'm like, okay. You know what? I kind of like that Power Rangers movie. I was totally shocked and surprised when I came out of the movie and I just said, you know what? That, that actually wasn't that bad. But here's the problem, Rob. It wasn't bad. It was, I would argue that that last Power Rangers movie was actually pretty good for what it was. And it still flopped monumentally. It was not bad. And it still right. flopped monumentally. I applaud guts and I applaud showing confidence in your properties but to a reasonable limit. And to me, it would almost seem like, hey, Hasbro, why don't you launch one thing? Why don't you put out one thing regarding Power Rangers and see if you hit the mark on it before coming out after you just had another movie that completely flopped and said, you know what we should do? Set it in the 90s and launch with a full cinematic universe. You know who tried to do that recently? Universal tried doing that with their dark universe and their monster universe. How'd that work out? Instead of coming out and saying, hey, listen, we've got an unproven property here right now. 
let's get one thing out. Let's see if we hit the mark. If we don't, let's readjust and, and pick it up a few years later. And if it does, then let's go full throttle. Coming off of a monumental failure, and again, I thought the movie was pretty good, but coming off of a monumental failure into let's go balls to the wall, full out cinematic television movies, we'll set our new our own Kevin Feige, and we'll set in the 90s. I, I got to tell you, Rob, Hasbro has done some boneheaded things before. This seems like a pretty boneheaded thing. I, I I think this just sounds ridiculous. I can't imagine taking a wronger approach. Did you just say wronger, John? Yes, I did. I can't imagine taking a wronger approach to this than what they seem to be doing. I know, Rob, uh, you've seen these reports. What's your take on this? Well, you know, my Burnett axiom has always been never put your universe before your characters or your story. Yes, it has. And that seems to be that seems to be what they're doing here. You know, there are franchises that I think sometimes are past their sale date, sell sell by date, and this is one of them. You know, I think the Power Rangers was something that was kind of of its time, and it went on for a long time. There's a lot of people who love Power Rangers. They grew up with Power Rangers. But I think Power Rangers is a different it's, – it's, it's, it's harder to update Power Rangers to be for a more adult audience, whereas if you look at something – like Transformers. Transformers, you can sort of up age it. You know, you can make it appeal to older. Like, look, I thought Transformers as a science fiction concept is really interesting. The Power Rangers is sort of stuck in a more, well, a younger demographic. And it's, it's, I hate to say it, it's for kids, you know, and I think that it doesn't, it doesn't travel up past high school. And and I think the idea that they're, no, no, Power Rangers can be just like the Transformers, I think is wrongheaded. Because I saw that first Transformers movie. I was never, I was too old to be a Transformers cartoon fan. I mean, I, I like the, tra I actually like the Transformers movie that came out in the 80s. But I'll tell you, when I saw the first Transformers movie, the, the, the movie Michael Bay's film, I, I liked it. The story of a boy in his car, Megan Fox, and the special effects technology was amazing. And the idea that the war between the Autobots and the Decepticons, that had a very science fiction bent to it that I, I was into. I don't feel the same way with the Power Rangers. Even the very name Power Rangers says 12 years old to me. And I just think the reason the Power Rangers movie, as good as it was, and I, like you, liked it, I just think it's fighting the fact that everybody thinks that Power Rangers is for kids, little kids. And and here's the thing, too. A lot of stuff aimed at kids can be incredibly successful. Like you yes, can, can have stuff that's targeted at kids and be incredibly <clears throat> successful. Hasbro, a lot of their business is targeted at kids. And they have been, I mean, there's a reason they've been around for as many decades as they have, they have been reasonably successful at it. I just, the, the fundamentals of, okay, if you want to make it for kids and if you want to target, like say the 17 and under crowd, that's fine. Don't set it in the nineties. I mean, that's it. Cause it, by setting it in the nineties, it seems like you're trying to capture a nostalgia element to it. There seems to be a nostalgia factor. They seem to want to try to recapture. Well, that's not how you get new kids into it. And then beyond that, as again, what I said earlier, there's the basic fundamental principle of for kids or not, your last movie made $145 million, not on opening weekend, not in North America, worldwide. That Power Rangers movie only made $145 million. Now, if it was a steaming pile of trash, maybe you could then go, well, yeah, but if we make it better, it'll, we'll have better results. It was not bad. They, did, they didn't do a bad job. And it hurts me to say that because I, I, for like a year, said that movie's going to be crap. That movie's going to be absolute garbage. And I actually had, had to eat my words. I had to come out and say, you know what? I actually had kind of fun with it. I thought they did a good job. But yeah. even then, they only made $145 million. How do well, you come out just, and then say, let's launch a cinematic universe off of a failure. I, I don't get it, Rob. Explain this to me. Well, I, what I, again, I think that there's decisions that are made in a corporate boardroom that don't take into consideration things that you don't necessarily quantify on paper. And that is the Power Rangers aren't cool. 
I mean, we live in a world where we're getting the Avengers shared universe. Hell, Hobbs and Shaw is a spinoff from Fast and Furious. And the very audience that might have been the target for Power Rangers is now watching the Fast and the Furious and the MCU. And the Power Rangers can't compete. The Power Rangers' very concept is kind of fun, goofy. And I don't think with our video game playing culture, when you know, you're know you 12 years old and you're playing, all, whether you're pay, playing Dota 2 or whether you're playing Warcraft or whether you're whatever, the world has kind of moved on. And Power Rangers is one of those concepts that I think is simply, for lack of a better term, uncool. And, and look, even Power Rangers reinvented itself for 20 years. And I just don't think the world the, – uh, look, Hasbro look, thinks, well, everybody loves Power Rangers. Why can't we bring it back? Look at, look at Transformers. They're not the same. They're mm. not the same. And they can't be thought of in the same way. Transformers can, – you can up-age Transformers. And the idea of, of cars transforming into robots appeals to me. Uh, I love that. <laughs> just like I love you know Pacific Rim or Godzilla movies or all that. I love Japanese science fiction. So Power Rangers should be something that appeals to me, but they no, it doesn't. It doesn't appeal to my uh, adult self. I don't think it would have appealed to me if I was 17 now. It's just a concept that belongs in a lower age bracket. And that's not to say that it won't be successful, but they think of it. They think that they're going to do MCU numbers, and there's nothing to bear that out. So yeah. why even talk about a shared universe? It's like, it'd be like, trying to start something like Quibi, which from the get-go was a terrible idea. And by the way, I read an article today. <laughs> Quibi's on the way out. Yeah, so not, not why not surprising. do Power Rangers? Why, why save, your, save, your, save yourself a lot of trouble? Yeah. Try and, and make if you one wanna, movie. If you want to go at kids, fine. Then don't do these other mistakes you're making. Like they're making, if you wanted to target this at kids, then they're making some terrible decisions because what they're doing is the wrong way to try to attract a new group, a new generation of kids to watching it. So they've, they're going to fail if they're trying to appeal on a nostalgia factor to older folks. They're going to fail if they're trying to bring in newer audience and target it at kids. You don't set in the 90s if you're trying to target this at kids. And so I just, I'm trying to see what is it they're seeing that makes them think, hell yeah, this is going to work. And hell yeah, let's not just do it with one movie first. Let's let's throw all the money at it and say we're going to do a full cinematic television movie, big screen crossover universe. When you flipped and fell on your face the last time out, I don't yeah, know. It just I seems mean, like wrongheaded. They, I, I think they look at things in they, these boardroom decisions. They're like, well, Stranger Things is set in the 80s. So we can do that and set it back. But that has a much broader appeal, much broader appeal. Absolutely. And I I just these decisions that get made sometimes we look, John, you and I marvel at them. We if we were in a position in a Hollywood boardroom and we were having a meeting with Hasbro, which now, you know, owns E1 or something. And we would be like, guys, no, it's not going (laughs) to work. It's not going to work. I mean, you and I know that we're movie pundits talking on the Internet. But they're going to just blaze forth to create this thing. I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. We'll see what I mean. Hey, I wish them all the luck in the world. I, I Me hope too. nothing more than to have the same experience I had with the last Power Rangers, which was going in thinking this is going to be a disaster and coming out going, that was pretty good. I hope they're able to do the same thing. We'll have to wait and see. Question here is, guys, what do you think? About this new Power Rangers cinematic cross multimedia empire universe that they're setting up here. Maybe you think it's still got a lot more gas left in the tank. Maybe you see the spark of genius that's in this idea that we're not seeing right now. Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys.